bridge rectifier. We talked about full wave rectifier in the previous video, and a full wave rectifier we used in the last one, we used diodes there. Well, today we are going to use actually four diodes to represent a full wave bridge rectifier. And the way that works there is you have actually <coughs> a transformer here. And now, in the previous one, we had a diode on this end, a diode on that end. Here, actually, we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to come down and do one diode this way. We'll call that D1. We have another diode this way. We'll call that D2. And we have one pointing upward there. That's D3 or D3. Doesn't matter which one is which. And one pointing down D4. And we have a load resistor here, R sub L, attached to ground. And this end is also attached to ground. That's ground here. So that's D4. So what will happen to that resistor when we apply an AC source through that. Now just heads up there, you might see this circuit looking a little bit different. You might see somebody drawing that circuit this way and go, that's different. I've seen a lot of people take that resistor and squeeze it in between here. This is D1, this is D2, this is D3. Oh, D2 is here. D3, I'm just keeping the same label here, and D4 here. And make this your ground. And those two circuits are exactly the same. There is no difference between them. Remember, that, and I've seen actually, you know, one more thing, I've seen people draw a wire from here, jumping over this, attaching it to that, and that's your ground. Still, the same exact thing. Both of these ends attach to the ground here. Both of these ends attach to the ground here. Now, if we're looking for V load here, that V load here becomes plus to minus in this direction. And usually, if you have an ideal transfer, you have a ratio of N1 to N2. So let's look at it when you have a positive cycle, this top half of it. So if I look at the top half of that circuit, lots of drawing here. So I'm looking at that part. And because this is positive here, and if we assume first approximation, meaning the diode here is going to have a zero voltage across it, this diode actually becomes a short circuit. That's that resistor, because it's forward bias. Notice that's plus to minus. You have a plus here. That means the voltage here is positive. It's going to make this diode to be active mode or forward bias. Current will go through it, zero voltage drop, VL, and will come down, and this also will be a short circuit. So D1 and D4 will be short circuit. And the other two will be open circuit. Why open circuit? Because they are reverse bias. So this is D2 and this is D4. So if we do KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law, let's call this voltage Vn. We'll say the ratio of 1 to 1 here. That means V2, this is V1. The ratio of V1 to V2 is equal to N1 to N2, which means V1 to V2 ratio of 1 to 1 
and that implies V1 equals V2. So if V1, which is that voltage, that means V2 is going to be the same value. And if the voltage drop here is 0 volt, and is 0 volt here, that means VL will be equals to VN, which is V1. So when your source here, we're looking at the positive cycle here, this is Vn, then Vl will be exactly the same if we use first approximation, will equal to that one. We'll have the same peak value. So now what happens when that source goes into the negative cycle? So let's look at that. And remember, I marked this one plus to minus. I want to stay in that direction. So my current was coming down this way is going through that from positive to negative. So now let's change it. Let's flip this one. And what will happen when we look at the negative, this part of that input Vn? We'll say one to one just to make the math easy. Now, this end, when this is negative, that means this end is going to be negative. That end, let me go back to the original circuit. This end now is going to be negative. This is going to be positive. If it's positive, it's going to force the current to go through this one, not that one. So D2 will be on. And again, for, if we use first approximation, that's short circuit. There's my resistor, R sub L, and I want the voltage to be plus to minus in that direction. So it's going to make it go this way. Again, down the same thing here. It's going to travel through this one, comes this way, and it goes back up there and into that negative end. So this is, will be a short circuit here too and it comes back that way. And what about these two? These two, is gonna, they're going to be in actually the reverse mode, which means open circuit. So let's follow the direction of the current again. Let me get a red marker. That current is going to come down this way, is going to travel this way, travel through this way, back to that way, back to the ground. But notice still entering plus to minus, which means now VL is going to be positive. VN is negative. VN here acts as a plus here, minus here, when this is negative. So if we do KVL here, if we follow this, we travel, let me get a highlighter and mark that. I'll use a purple color for that. Hopefully you like purple. Mm -hmm. So we're going to travel this way. Let's do KVL going that direction. So here we go. Let's go from this way, plus to minus. If I travel this way, if I travel that way, let's go in this direction since the current's going that direction. Minus V2. Or if I type in, this is plus to minus V1, that means this is plus to minus, it has to be plus to minus V2, but I know it's going to be, it's going to be the reverse. I want to prove to you it's the reverse. So if we enter this, that's plus VL, negative V2, well actually if I'm entering this way, that's plus VL, because I'm entering the plus plus V2 equals to zero. And that tells me VL equals negative V2, which means in the negative cycle here, in this portion here of Vn, VL is going to look like this, the reverse of that. And the peak value will be the same, whatever that peak value for the source there. 
So now if you put both circuit together, if you put them both together, this is what you're gonna see. So when this is positive, VL is also going to be positive, same as VN. But when you go into the negative side of it, right here, this is actually going to flip that, and you're going to have what we call a full wave rectifier. So that's VL versus VN. Again, quickly to go through them. When this is positive, current will go this way, will travel through that, enter this one plus to minus, down this way, it's going to mark a plus to minus. That's why this is positive. When we go into the negative, current is going to go this way through D2. Through that one, it's going to mark it plus to minus, which means that voltage is positive now, and down this way into the ground. So VL is always going to be positive, and you have that VL equals this value. Now, if this is V max here, that's what this one's gonna be, V max. So what will happen now if this is not an ideal diode? Remember, first approximation, we treat this as an ideal diode with the voltage of zero. Second approximation says treat that as a voltage source with a value of 0.7 if it's silicon. So if we assume this is not ideal, we use second approximation, then my circuit will look like this. So when we're in the plus side of it, this is going to be like a voltage source with a value of 0.7, that's forward biased. That's the resistor. That's 0.7 plus to minus, plus to minus, and that's the ground. And these two will be open, because they'd be reverse bias. So if this is V1, this is V2, if they are equal, if N1 equals to N2, so if we do a KVL here, if we travel this way, and this is actually VR or VL. So let's do KVL traveling this way. That's negative V2 plus the 0.7 plus the VL. It's plus to minus here plus the 0.7 is equal to zero, which means VL equals what? V2 minus 1.4 volts. And what about when we do the negative? The negative cycle, the same thing. This is V1. This is V2. When we're in the negative, this is when we're in the positive cycle. Let's look at the negative cycle here. So the current gonna come from the bottom. It, again, if we assume then ideal, it's gonna be a plus to minus here, 0.7 volts. That's the resistor R. That's VL, and this will be plus to minus, the current has to go this way. And these two now will be open. And if we do KVL here, and let's travel this way, we'll go again. And what are we going to have? 
negative V2, negative 0.7, Or actually, I can make it go down this way. I can travel this way. It might be a better option instead of going this way. Let's travel that way. Since this voltage is going to be negative here, so here we go. That'll be plus V2, plus 0.7, plus VL plus 0.7 is equal to 0. So that means V2 plus 1.4 plus VL is equal to 0. Travel this way. So you end up with V negative V2 plus 1.4. So either way we do it, and V2 is negative here, so what's going to happen basically when you look at the full wave rectifier, if this is what Vn looks like, it, and let me just say I define 0.7 here, So my output voltage actually is going to start as zero. You need, I mean, that's 1.4, not 0.7. I need to start here, and it's going to go like this. So it doesn't reach the peak value. It's going to be Vm, the maximum value, minus 1.4. And when the value is below 0.7, actually 1.4 here, nothing is going to happen. You need a 1.4 volts for both of these to be forward bias. If I don't have 1.4, it's not going to happen. Just like this, I need 1.4 difference here to make sure these guys are on. So on the negative side, if I don't have 1.4, the negative 1.4 here, these two are not going to be on. So that's why you see it's zero to here. It's zero. And it goes the height of V maximum minus the 1.4. So that's actually what a bridge rectifier works or looks like and how it works there.